Christina, thank you so much for joining us here at Case 19. Great to hear you talk earlier about Dome Yard and how you're sort of breaking new ground, if you like. What do you think of your title and your um, approach and, uh, and being seen as a disruptor? You know, it's super surreal. So um, when we first started Dome Yard about seven years ago, we started it out of passion. It wasn't to try to, you know, disrupt anybody or to remove anybody from the industry or anything. It was mainly we just wanted to combine a scientific approach to finance. And, you know, we thought that would be really awesome. And uh, we just like both. I love science and I love finance and wanted to combine the two. Uh, and then today, it's just crazy how um, maybe we got really lucky or unlucky, I don't know, but we were we chose an industry that's very controversial, high frequency trading. And after some time, I realized you know, after Flash Boys came out and you know after I would go to panels actually, and just a funny story is I would go on some panels after Flash Boys and you know, someone in the audience would raise their, raise their hands and be like, I hate everything you do, you guys are evil, you know, you're the ones that are stealing money. And so I learned that we have to be able to set the record straight and, you know, um, and just dispel some of those misconceptions that are out there, like that we're, you know, all these HFT firms are evil and stuff. And so over time became kind of a voice and a representative in the space. and you know, kind of became known as that, I guess, over time by accident a little bit, but it is fun. I think um, it's a responsibility uh, and a privilege at the same time. Tell me about your model. What do you look to do? Because you really use all the, the most recent tools that are at your disposal, don't you? Yeah, so we like to be at the forefront of innovation for a small, young firm, um, and that means, you know, using, uh, you know, a lot of big data, machine learning techniques on all that data. So um, the reason why we do what we do actually is because every day, you know, in the New York Stock Exchange, right, I was telling that example of like how much data we get every hour, you know, 300 million pieces of data. And uh, we realize a lot of firms just can't analyze that fast enough. Uh, and so we're like, let's look at it from a microscopic level. Look at all this cool data that's happening on the microscopic level. There's so much fascinating stuff happening and take advantage of those, op those opportunities in the markets. And it is possible, so we started doing that. Uh, and then, you know, recently as well, looking at other opportunities to, um, to innovate, not just in the front office with the strategies, but also in the back office. So we've been doing all kinds of different things, but I think um, ultimately, you know, the reason why I enjoy my work is because we get to kind of be like, what do we want to do next? Where do we think society, you know, can benefit from and can, you know, do these types of things in our space and, and just make the world, you know, more interesting, more exciting. So, yeah. <laughs> so exciting and, and vast opportunities with data. But I guess with that comes sort of cautionary tales about the use of it and how you selective you need to be. Yeah, exactly. There's a lot of cautionary tales. Um, and, you know, for us, uh, you know, we've been audited a lot of times by regulators and cybersecurity is one of the biggest actually um, new topics like that have come up in recent years where um, they're really strictly looking and scrutinizing cybersecurity practices of all firms whether you're discretionary or super quant like us um, you know it's still a very important topic uh, that is of interest to them so they'll look at things like where do our technologies come from you know they'll look at the what people call the black box, which sounds super scary and mysterious, it really is. And we opened the black box for them. Here's what we're working on. Here's exactly, you can look at exactly and break down all the different components of a strategy. You know, they'll look at those things. And then they'll also look at things like, um, do we use external things in the cloud? You know, which is a huge security risk. So we got in trouble recently for using Google Docs. You know, so things that kind of surprise you um, that we wouldn't expect as well as kind of surprised us when we got in trouble for that. Um, but anyway, so there's a lot of different things and it's a huge responsibility, but you know, as a firm, we still need to kind of be on top of those things and be aware, you know, and be careful, I guess, with what we're doing. You've got to be seriously nimble, haven't you, to be able to cope with that. It's so fast paced and fast changing. Is that yeah. pretty exhausting? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you have to basically know kind of the life cycle of a strategy, for instance, in the front office. So, um, you know, a lot of the reason why some firms fail after, you know, some of these firms have existed for many, many years, and then suddenly they just, after November, December, you know, they've had really bad performance and they end up shutting their doors for the first time. You know, that, that does happen, and it's because um, sometimes you just they just don't have the right strategies ready for this environment. So times do change really fast. Um, it is crazy. Another story is like um, I was speaking at another uh, hedge fund conference uh, back in April of last year, and um, I remember talking about high frequency trading and introducing the topic, and it felt like the audience was very familiar. Everyone's like, oh, yeah, we know what you do. You know, you're high frequency. And then after me, all the other funds were like crypto and esoteric strategies and stuff. And I realized I am the most boring fund in the room. I'm the oldest, most boring, most like they called me a dinosaur. I was like, really? You know, because I was high frequency trading, whereas everyone else was doing crypto trading. And so um, it's just funny how even after six, you know, five years time, we went from being like the cool young people to being like the old dinosaurs in our space. And now all the new fund launches are completely different from what we're doing. So yeah, time really does uh, change, you know, things change really fast these days. 
and also you've got to be selective about the data. We talked that about alternative data earlier, and uh, you were talking about you know good data versus bad data. You know, mm -hmm. you've got to be selective in those terms. Yeah, exactly. Um, so one thing that we didn't mention during the panel, but a lot of uh, researchers um, on the panel, you know, what they spend, I would guess, over half their time doing is just cleaning up data and like making the data usable <laughs> in general. And so there is a lot of noise and a lot of mess in a lot of the data that we collect. Uh, and so it's up to the researchers to be able to clean that up and figure out what is real and what's not and you know find really good uh, signals from that. And so it is rough because there's a process of, um, you know, we get pitched a lot by startups uh, with alternative data sets. And then the challenge is, well, you know, can we as a firm, you know, make out, generate any opportunities out of that? And if not, then maybe you're pitching to the wrong, you know, crowd here or, um, it's kind of like putting the solution, what do you call it, the cart ahead of the horse or whatever, where um, these alternative data sets, that's great, and they're pitching to hedge fund. But the problem is they're coming with a solution, but they're, we don't really have a problem yet. So they're looking for a problem to try to solve, but you know we don't know that problem. And so, <laughs> yeah, it's a, all kind of fascinating topics that we come across on a daily basis. What's it been like being part of CASE? Because you've been mm -hmm. on a panel here. There's lots of great minds. What do you hope to impart, and what do you hope to take away? Yeah, you know, I'm here. Um, we're, we're not raising funding for our fund, but rather um, I do these conferences mainly because I realize it's important to kind of set the record straight and to tell it how it is. And, you know, a lot of people view the black box as like, you know, Terminator machines taking over the world and robots, you know, and uh, going out of control and, you know, bringing the markets down with them or whatever, right? And that's really not the case at all. Like, um, just telling people that, you know, surprisingly, I work in this industry, I'm a practitioner, and the machines that we built are actually surprisingly dumb. You know, if you feed it the wrong data set, they're going to come up with really terrible predictions. And you don't, you definitely don't want that in the marketplace. And and you know, there's risk checks and all that kind of stuff in place as well. But, so there's very much space yeah. for the humans still too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like there's the human element of um, you know of telling the machines what to do, <laughs> and refining our strategies, and also society, human society changes. And when human society changes, we need to make sure that our machine society also kind of changes and grows with that too. So. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of stuff here and it's, it's fun to be here though at these events, yeah. We're not quite obsolete just yet then, Christina. Yeah, no, not, not irrelevant, not quite yet, so. Great, thanks yeah. so much for sharing your thoughts with us. Great to yeah, talk to you. So thank much. you. Yeah, thank you so much. It's great to be here.